Hello, shalom, and welcome to part three, the third part of three, a series of videos on the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. And today we conclude the commandments by looking at verses 13 to 17, Exodus chapter 20, verses 13 to 17. Lo tirzach. So again, this is um, the imperfect. So the commandment is expressed by the negative word not and the imperfect form of the verb, which again is why they're translated traditionally as thou shalt not. And this one said thou shalt not kill. Now in English we have the word kill and the word murder. Hebrew has several words in this area, but none of them, they don't correspond neatly to our distinction between kill and murder. So this word is actually used to describe capital punishment, but clearly the commandment isn't prohibiting capital punishment. So it seems to be referring to a premeditated and deliberate act. Church Father Augustine also saw the commandment as forbidding suicide since it doesn't add your neighbor as with the commandment about bearing false witness. But I'm um, not sure that we agree with that. Anyway, that's what he said. Another interesting point in other versions of the commandments, this one is demoted one or two places, goes further down one or two places. For example, in the Septuagint, the early Greek translation, and in Luke 18.20, and in Romans 13, 9. So it's interesting to think why this one might have been demoted one or two places. But anyway, we come to verse 14. Lo tin af. Not, you shall not commit adultery. This one's translated in English by commit adultery. So the law of Moses distinguished between adultery and a death penalty was given for that, and sexual contact with a young woman which carried a monetary fine and usually marriage if the father was willing. Um, G.K. Chesterton saw this from an angle I hadn't thought of before. He said, keeping to one woman is a small price for so much as seeing one woman. To complain that I could only be married once was like complaining that I'd only been born once. It didn't go with the terrible excitement of which one was talking. It showed not an exaggerated appreciation of sex, but a curious unappreciation of it. A man is a fool who complains he cannot enter Eden by five gates at once. And so it's taking an interesting perspective on it. Uh, Bob Hope said once, staying faithful to your wife only requires common sense. But um, today people say a lot of things. They, they People talk about the love of my life, a soulmate, and the one. And often when they're saying that, they're not talking about their current wife or partner, but they're talking about someone else that their eyes have set upon. And some of them actually say, don't be a coward. Be, cor be courageous. Leave your old wife and follow follow, you've only got one life, take a chance, follow your soulmate, the love of your life, the one. But um, you've got to wonder whether they do get happiness or they only get misery and um, the next day they see someone else who they think is their soulmate. People, but people also say, oh, our relationship ended. Well, they say, oh, we fell out of love. We fell out of love. But um, this commandment is very brief doesn't doesn't um, give give an inch to any of those uh, rather silly ideas. It simply says, do not commit adultery, and it reminds you of Jesus' words to the woman caught in adultery, which we read in John chapter seven. He said to her, "Go and sin no more." Very brief and to the point marriage counselling. Okay, down to verse fifteen. Lo tignav, tignov.
So, um, just have a note here that um, in other ancient Near Eastern cultures, there was the death penalty for theft, but the Bible doesn't have the death penalty for theft. So, the Bible recognizes that stealing your neighbor's um, car is not quite in the same league as stealing his wife. It's a rather more serious thing. In verse 16, no tagene bereicha reid shaker. The first approximation to Rana is answer, but it also means testify as in court. So this is the main thing that I think is in mind here. Um, testifying a but normally means in, but here it's has in the sense of against your neighbor or your friend, your testimony, false. Just recently the um, famous singer Cliff Richard was put through the ringer of a false accusation, but it seemed his accuser got no penalty, but penalties are prescribed in the law of Moses for someone who gives false testimony. So verse 17, the final commandment, lo tachamod beth regecha, lo tachamod eshet regecha. So not shall you desire, do not desire, or the old word is covet, or we say want, um, house of friend your, not you desire wife of friend your, were agavado, were amathau, were shoro, wa hamoro, hamoro, were call a share leregeha. So this is an important word covet and um, sometimes I use um, mnemonics, mnemonics to help me remember words and the one that I use for this one is how mad, how mad it is to covet, hamad, hamad, how mad. So interesting that house is put first and uh, wife comes second but we should remember that house um, in Hebrew doesn't just refer to the building but we could translate household his entire family and his entire property so in some ways that's covering the um, the whole lot so it's interesting that this last commandment looks inward uh, Durham, in his uh, Word Biblical Commentary, calls it a summary commandment, a prohibition of an attitude that precedes the violation of any or all of the other commandments. And of course, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, zeroes in on the heart. He said that getting angry with your brother is as bad as murder. Recently I saw the movie The Invention of Lying, and in it we see Ricky Gervais and he tries to mock the Ten Commandments. That was his motivation, but he actually makes some good points. It's true that the Ten Commandments are kind of a, very, a broad brush outline, and there's a lot of detail that needs to be filled in for specific cases. Moses was kept busy, we read in the Bible, day and night, judging cases, just as Ricky Gervais started getting frustrated with all the detailed questions he was asked when he was trying to uh, set out these commandments for the eagerly waiting people. And just a, a final comment, Ten Commandments, are there more? Well, obviously there are more in the Old Testament, and these are, are just a broad brush number. Ten, of course, is a number that has symbolic significance in the Old Testament, representing completeness, but that doesn't mean that these commandments uh, can't be elaborated on and uh, some gaps filled in and uh, the very perhaps the most important addition 
addition to them is the one we read in John 13, 34, where Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, love one another.